Hi everyone, welcome back to part two of my interview with Alex Georgiou. It's been such an amazing interview, nearly an hour long. We've decided to cut the video into two parts. So let's tune back into part two with Alex. Do you think that mold illness, mold sickness is very new then? Because, you know, I speak to my parents and they'll tell me that, well, they grew up in damp buildings and so did their parents and so did their grandparents, you know, before we had central heating and warmth and, and everything else. Generations, generations. But we have identified that a lot of people genetically can render them harmless. It's just that proportion of people that don't have the genetical makeup, i.e. myself, to render yeah. those toxins that I'm breathing in from the mold harmless. That's yeah. the case, isn't it? Um, Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think mold does, um, does anyone any good. Uh, and I think if you're in a particularly bad environment, i.e. bad um, moldy environment, living or working in, in that environment, even if you don't have you know, the genetics to make you um, susceptible to mold illness, yes. it's still going to put a strain on your, on your body, especially the liver and the kidneys, because mm. those toxins still have to be metabolized. Yes. So you still breathe those toxins in and they still have to be excreted. It's just that some people do quite well excreting them and other people can't excrete them and then mm. they store it in the body and that's when you become ill. But uh, I, don't, I don't think it does anyone any good. No. Going back to your question, it's it's the the, the mycotoxins are a relatively new aspect of of, um, of mold sickness. We've always known about spores and mm. mold allergies because even the mainstream medical profession acknowledges that mold. Yes, they do, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Is a, is a real thing. So if you go to the NHS, they will uh, identify that you know, mold can cause respiratory issues like asthma. Yeah. Um, but what isn't known about in mainstream medical circles is about mycotoxins and how mm. they affect the human body. And really, that's because um, doctors are not trained to look at that. So it's not on their radar. I mean, yeah. even when I was training in naturopathic school, it wasn't talked about. It was no. never spoken about. And it's only through my own uh, personal experience of uh, yeah. dealing with a water-damaged environment and, and being sick from mold that I've discovered this. But it's becoming more um, talked about, spoken yeah. about, and there's more education on it. So it's always been there. But I think uh, either we've just not known about it and it's, mm. it's gone off, it's not on the radar, um, or there's genuinely more people that are becoming sick yeah. from mold. No, yeah. I don't know if it's probably, it's probably a bit both, to be honest. Yeah, because I speak to obviously through the awareness that I've been creating and also not only um, the fact that I've now got mold illness, I've been talking about gut health now for two years. And so I get lots of men and women that write to me and um, share their symptoms and, and what hell they're going through with their guts. Um, it just makes me think now that all this time I've had mold illness and um, it, I don't think that everybody's got mold illness at all. I think that's really important to say that we're all different and we're all not we've all not been exposed to mold. Um, and it's like you said, it comes under an umbrella that, um, you know, somebody suggested I had a thyroid issue because the symptoms are very similar. Um, I've been, um, uh, well, everybody's had the theories on what I've got, but I just think it's such a shame that it's not really widespreadly known about. And, um, and you see people suffering with so many chronic Ill, different chronic illnesses that had I not identified it, I think I would have just reached age 60 and been a very poorly, miserable, narky cow. And, you know, I probably would have had um, mobility problems, definitely full of uh, anxiety and depression. And um, I definitely would not have been a very, very well person. And another thing was I, I, I was getting the bones in my legs were aching and, and the the, uh, the bones in my fingers and my forearm were aching i don't have any of that anymore neither it's just it's incredible that i'm now i'm dealing with it and i feel really sad for people not being able to identify if they have got mold illness um 
And I just wish, anyway, well, that's the reason why we're talking now is to hopefully um, people can watch and think, oh, maybe that's just something I should investigate as well and just outrule because you just never know, do you? Because the, the symptoms are so deliberating and, and horrible that um, I think it's really something to investigate. Um, you know, apparently Dr. Jill Christa said that about 25% of the population don't have the genes to render the, the gases, the mycotoxins harmless. Yes. Am I right on yes. that? So, which is a quarter of the population. Yeah. So It's a quarter of the population. I mean, that's, yeah. that's an estimate because yes. we've not tested everyone. But um, if you think that probably 25 to 50% of buildings have had some water damage at some point, yeah. um, which could make them susceptible to mould and mycotoxins, so yeah, that's that's a that's a huge percentage mm. of buildings and a huge percentage of people that have um, you know the, the the potential to suffer from mold illness. Should we just briefly go over how do you get well? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, because let's have some positive that you can get well from mold illness. Um, you can, you can. Yeah, and and some people will get well quite soon. I mean, there's um, different. Uh, mm. Yeah, so some people can leave a building that has had mould in it and uh, they can feel well quite quickly, you know, sometimes yeah. within a few days. Um, some people will need more um, treatment and mm -hmm. support. So really the number one objective is to vacate or remediate the building if there's mm. been a mould yeah. issue. Um, if you can do that, then you've got a really good chance of getting well quite yeah. quickly. Um, so... The treatment plan really depends on how sensitive that person is. So if somebody's very sensitive to mould, you have to go very slowly because mm. when you kill off mould in the body, uh, it doesn't go down without fire, so it can cause more yeah. detox reactions, inflammation. So really the, the principal things that we use is binders, mm -hmm. which basically grab onto the toxins out of the liver and then yep. excrete them. Push them the out, yep. Yeah, flush them out. Um, and then once we've got some binders in place, we can do that through food or we can use supplemental binders like um, chlorella, bentonite clay, etc. Um, mm. Then we would I use have the, like, um, to what is it? I take the toxic. Oh, yes, yeah, I take Top. that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's that Which one. is a clay binder, uh, so isn't it? Yes, mm. yeah. clay. So it depends on on the individual, what type of mycotoxins they have, yep. which ones they can tolerate. Um, but there's lots of different options. Mm. Um, so when, once the binds are in place, then we can think about treating the body. So we would look at either the sinuses mm. or the gut first. Um, not everyone will so have... So sinuses, because we obviously breathe in the mycotoxins, yeah. the, the gases, yes. and it affects the, um, the breathing tract and the sinuses. Uh, and I had sinusitis for years and years and years. And you won't believe it, Alex, if I turn my head upside down now, I'm absolutely fine. Whereas before it was like pressure, you know, it was awful. Headaches have gone. Um, so yeah, so we have the sprays for the sinuses, don't yeah. we? Yeah. So I would normally start with wherever somebody's got the most symptoms. So if it's more gut related, we, we would start with the gut. And if it's more sinus related, yeah. we would start with the sinuses. Very difficult to prove if somebody's got colonization of mold in the sinuses or the gut but you know if there's symptoms i use things mm. like cramping bloating or sinusitis in the sinuses then you know that there's there's a good likelihood that there's a mold colonization and yep. uh, so then we would use the sprays in the sinuses that would be mm. things like essential oils um or other antifungals we could use um silver spray which is antibacterial what I use. Yep. Um, and then things to break down that biofilm we spoke about earlier. So um, a xylitol is, is a really good yeah. agent that we can use quite safely yeah. in the sinus. And I use all um, of those, don't I? I, I use yeah. three different types. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. it's amazing because you know, people can go from having had inflammation, sinus, sinusitis, and mm. not be able to breathe for years, all of a sudden they're able to breathe again. I mean, yeah, yeah. They can sleep through the night without having a dry mm. mouth and... It just the quality of life improves, so that, that's a yeah. huge. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm on the three different types of nasal sprays. I've got lots of binders um, that I'm taking, supplementing with, and food that I'm eating as well. Uh, I'm eating all the right foods um, that will help 
bind onto the toxins to flush them out. So my, so my focus point was the diet that I've done. I followed Petronella's diet, which is very much lots of, um, lots of vegetables, bioflavonoids, lots of the, the whole rainbow of all the different fruit and veg and uh, high protein. And that suits me really well. Um, there's a short list of foods not to eat, like we said, the mushrooms and anything that contains yeast. Um, and so bread, white bread was a no-go, wasn't it? And then, yeah, and then the sprays. So with the gut, um, if the mold has colonized in the gut, which it seems to have done in my case because of my gut issues, although we do know that I've got an imbalance of bacteria in my small intestine as well, don't we? Um, so uh, when I've dealt with the, when I, when I use nasal sprays, I think you said that my gut should just follow and heal itself anyway if we deal with this area. Is that correct? Or yeah, so mm. it's not always black and white. It depends okay. on the mm. person. But um, I mean, if if the gut doesn't resolve itself, so if the gut doesn't settle down and you've treated the sinuses, mm. um, then you know that that's the time when you could could consider doing some gut work, but you'd have to consider that there might be other things in the gut mm. apart from just mold. So there could be other yeast colonization, there could be parasites, mm. um, there could be a SIBO, bacterial yeah. um, overgrowth or a dysbiosis in the gut. As a, re as a result of the mold illness, you mean? Yes. Yeah. 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 Because, okay. because mold, mold mm. um, suppresses the immune system, so it means that the normal um, immune function is lost yep. and then you're more likely to see pathogens in the gut i mean the mold does a lot of, a lot of other things so well. that's why i ended up with yeah that's why i ended up with parasites wasn't it really so i ended yeah. up with the parasites and the food poisoning because it suppressed my immune system and these were all the symptoms yeah. that i had yeah and then once you've you know potentially got parasites and other things that shouldn't be in the gut then it, it weakens yeah. your gut and your immune system even more so mm. It's really like a, a, you know a, a, a kind of a vicious cycle where unless you kind of stop this um, ongoing cycle, this self perpetuating cycle, nothing kind of gets back to where mm. it should do. So just focusing on you know getting rid of uh, the sea bubble or just getting rid yeah. of parasites is is not going to be a long lasting resolution because the mm. mold really is the is the kind of the, the main thing yeah. that suppresses everything in mm. the body so that has to be dealt with first and foremost and then you can consider looking at things like SIBO, candida, yes. uh, yeah. parasites etc. Yeah so that's really good to know that we can get well um, even though it could be a harder road for some than for others and um, and just one more thing as well um, it comes under the same umbrella as Lyme disease doesn't it is it the, kind of like the same family so to speak yeah um yes and no so, so lyme disease can cause uh similar symptoms um, there's a lot of overlap with lyme mm. disease and mold sickness and i think certainly if mold is present it can make lyme disease mm. um, di more difficult to resolve and it can make other conditions more difficult to resolve oh, okay. mm. so they, they they do they are kind of similar in terms of the the way that they affect the body and the, the, the different symptoms mm. that they produce um but lyme disease is, is primarily mm. caused by uh bartonella and borrelia and okay. other co-infectious bacteria so so they're, they're primarily that's bacteria whereas mold is a fungal yes. organism so okay just mm. slightly different organisms but causing obviously yeah similar devastating effects on the human body. Yeah. Well, I've been completely um, blown away with the knowledge of um, mold illness and, and how horrible um, and vicious it is on the body, really. And uh, I'm just glad that I found you and you're helping me and uh, I'm on the road to recovery now, although I'll always have to be careful now and at least I'm on top of it. But I think it's really worth mentioning as well um, that I've been doing lots of other biohacks and um, I think Dr. Jill Krista in her books mentions ozone as well, but you can do ozone in the body. Um, yes. I've not seen you or had had chance to tell you. I went on to a retreat um, in Turkey recently, and they have all. And Dr. Jill Krista apparently set it up, 
Um, uh -huh. It's a small world. I was chatting to the nurse and she, I was talking about my mold illness and, and they were coming up with lots of different ideas of IVs that I could have and treatment whilst I'm there. And then I talked about Dr. Jill Krista and they said, oh my God, she was here. She was the person that actually implemented the ozone treatments within our centre. I was like, oh my God, yeah. Um, like it was fake, it was yeah, I know, yeah, exactly. So in a nutshell, it's all about um, eating the right diet, a protocol of uh, supplements and the nasal sprays and um, trying to be a little bit disciplined and a few biohacks here and there, really, to try and speed things on. And the binders. The binders. Yes. The binders, yeah. Yep. You can't forget them. So it's nutrition, binders, supplement protocol, yes. and any That's biohacks in between. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's really just about supporting the body yeah. to, to excrete them out of the body. You know, the, the Lots of antitoxins in the body, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And, and Don't and know what this sure is. sure that the yeah. body is not you know, um, mm. the terrain is not kind of um, hospitable to mould, so you yes. don't want them in, in the body. So, no. um, mm. you know, if we can do all that, then you can get well. Yeah. So yeah. Don't, let, you know, don't be scared of mould. It's not, mm. um, you know, it's possible to recover from mould. It's yes. just you've got to understand how, how it mm. works and how yeah. it lives so you can always stay one step ahead. Yep. Well, I feel great. Thank you for all your help and my hair's growing back and... And that's because I'm getting all the right nutrients and um, I'm eating. Most importantly, I'll be really honest with you, it's the nutritional element for me as well. Just eating the right foods. And OK, I'm doing all the rest, but I've never eaten as well as I'm eating now. And my gut's great. Uh, I'm not on the low FODMAP anymore. I'm eating all the fruit and veg that I can. I'm a bit funny on fruit, but that's because of the mold illness, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So I have to be careful with some fruit. But I, I'm starting to feel amazing. And I'm actually really excited to retest um, and yeah. see where we're up to. So maybe we should film all of that as well so everybody can yeah, see definitely. where I'm up it's to. Just... Yeah. It's a journey, isn't it? So I think it's, it is. uh, it's nice. And you had it yourself, good. didn't you? You had mold and and you've yes. recovered. Are you fine now or are you? Um, I'm, I'm definitely feeling a lot better I mean, yes. than I was when I first um, had the, the mycotoxin yes. issue from, from, the, um, from the building where I'm living. Um, I still think there's an element of mycotoxins present in the environment, which yes. is very, very hard to fully get rid of. But... The way I'm kind of dealing with it is really supporting my body by, like yep. yourself, eating well, um, yep. doing you know detox procedures like infrared sauna, yes. um, exercising and sweating, binders, mm. um, the right supplements to support my body, yep. and I can feel really good despite the fact that there may be some mold yeah. toxins yeah. present. I I'm the same. I feel as though. Um, I'm not going to get away from these mycotoxins that are present around me. If it makes you become healthier in terms of your yeah. diet and mm. your, your self-care techniques and practices, yeah. then that isn't a bad thing. You know? No, so yeah, exactly. You kind of it as a positive thing. If it, if it, yes. it makes you kind of stay on top of your health, yes. then... Totally agree. Yeah. OK, well, thank you so much. I'll put all your details below. Um, you've been inundated with a few people from some of my um, YouTube um, videos, haven't you? I know there was one lady that <laughs> she contacted me and I felt really sorry for her. Her Where she was living was absolutely, there was black mould all over the home she was living in. in and yeah. uh, apparently she's been able to leave now and she's working with you and hopefully she's... That's just Alex, one example. Just so we've helped one person, yeah. Alex, with she's with spread the word. Oh, really? Already, so, oh, yeah, that's, that's amazing. Like, yeah. At least we've helped one person. We've helped one person. Exactly. More. Yeah, exactly. There is, yeah. <laughs> yes. OK. Yeah, OK. Details are all below for Alex. And, um, oh. Oh, you oh, nearly went then. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, no, I'll let you go because I know you're mega busy. And um, Thanks, thank you, thank you so pleasure. much for your time. Yes, yeah, take care. Okay, See bye. you. Bye. Bye. Okay, so that's a wrap. That's the end of our interview with Alex, who is personally helping me with my own journey with mold illness. And how interesting was that? It's just a real eye opener, isn't it? You just can't believe how. Sorry, excuse my dog 
how deliberating mold sickness and mold illness is on the body it's just um, catastrophic basically and thank god i found alex who has suffered himself and is now a practitioner and treats and helps people with mold illness i hope this has given some food for thought for you if you do suspect that you have mold um, sickness mold illness then please feel free to get in touch with alex all his details are below remember always seek professional help first um, i'm just somebody who is suffering with mold illness and i'm just trying to spread the word i'm not a professional you need to speak to the professionals if you do suspect you have mold illness or mold sickness and i think that's really really important so make sure you do seek the help of a professional okay i'm going to let you go because it's been a long part two if you like what you've watched then please like the like button make sure you subscribe any comments please comment below i will do my best to get back to you and all alex's details are below as well Take care. Thanks for listening.